What's up guys? Today I'm taking a look at a brand new knife from Holtzman's Gorilla Survival, the Bushwhacker. Now I am relatively new to the Holtzman's Gorilla Survival gang. My first experience with Holtzman's Gorilla Survival was just barely with Battlebox Mission 93 and their Bloodline fixed blade. So the Bushwhacker comes in a very nice magnetic box with great presentation. Now I've already opened and used this one, but I do have some footage of the unboxing. It comes packaged very nicely and well oiled. I had enough oil dripping from the blade to actually fry up some eggs, so that was nice. In all seriousness though, that's awesome. It's packaged well to make it in good condition. And they had a little paper here telling you that D2 steel will rust if you don't take care of it properly. So I appreciate that. I've had a couple of D2 knives, not from Holtzman's, actually show up at my house already with rust spots. So I appreciate all the oil and the nice packaging and the foam cut out to make sure nothing's bouncing around. So in the box, you've got the Bushwhacker, an awesome full tang fixed blade. This thing is huge for whacking bushes or all kinds of things. I'll talk more about this in just a second. You also have a very nice Kydex sheath ready to go out of the box with an adjustable belt clip attachment and a ferro rod, striker, an Allen key and some paracord. I love the presentation. I love the awesome magnetic box with foam cutouts. Awesome, ready to use setup. You can attach the striker and the ferro rod to the sheath with this paracord. And it looks like these attachments are removable. So I'm gonna go over the specs and show you some of my testing results and give you my likes and dislikes or some pros and cons. And the first thing I wanna say is I have already beat the hell out of this thing and it's holding up great. The blade length is almost six inches, probably about five and three quarters with a five and a half inch handle and a total length of about 11 and a quarter inches. You know, one of my dislikes is how tiny that blade is. I mean, look at that tiny little blade. <laughs> Just kidding, this thing is massive. And the stock thickness is about 4.2 millimeters, 0 0.16, 0 0.17 inches. And it weighs, without the sheath, 342 grams or 12 ounces. With the sheath and the attachments, about one pound and three ounces. The blade still is D2 with an HRC of 58 to 60. The knife is available in this version with the OD Green G10 handle or also brown G10 or black G10 with green liners. I picked the OD Green version just because I prefer a non-coated blade. The black and the orange G10 versions look really cool too, but where this one has kind of a stonewashed finish on the flats, those ones have a black coating. And this is not a Scandi grind, by the way. It kind of looks like it might be in the pictures, uh, but you do have a beveled edge here, which honestly, for the type of stuff I'm gonna do with this knife, I prefer it how it is. So I wanna show you some cutting tests. The factory edge on this thing was awesome. I did some tests right out of the box and it was razor sharp. And then I went and did some batani with this thing and really beat the crap out of it. Mostly because I don't have a lot of experience with Holtzman's and so I did want to do some more testing with this one before I showed it on my channel. So I did some impromptu batani, not necessarily the best technique in the world. And I was actually using apricot wood, which is a hardwood, a very hard wood. If you're out hiking or camping or surviving, you're probably going to want to use a softwood to reduce the risk of damaging your tools that you might be relying on. Uh, but I wanted to use this apricot wood just to really test the edge on this thing and see how it would hold up. And as you can see, there's no damage to this blade or to the edge at all. You have some minor scratching on the blade, which is expected but no chipping or other damage to the edge itself. Oh, I guess I better test the scraper really quick.
The ferro rod and scraper also work pretty well. And let me give you a size comparison with the bloodline. So let me tell you my likes and dislikes or some pros and cons with the Holtzman's Gorilla Survival Bushwhacker. Or with Holtzman Survival in general. I really like the packaging and the gift box. I think that's one thing that they're doing really well and is probably leading to a lot of their success on Amazon is the gift box and the fact that it's a complete kit or set ready to ready to rock and roll. I like the overall value and quality. I like that it's actually a full tang fixed blade. If you're going to be doing any kind of batoning like that, it's definitely advantageous to have a full tang fixed blade and a very thick blade at that. The handle is comfortable. You got plenty of room. I love the blade shape. I love the two-tone kind of look. You should also be able to throw sparks with the knife because it has a 90 degree spine. Might be a little easier with some of the smaller Holtzman's knives. Um, if you look on Amazon or on their website, they have a lot of other survival knives, neck knives, survival gear. All right, so let's talk about some dislikes or cons. So, you know, I will admit one thought I had when I was looking at it was, man, that's kind of an expensive knife for D2 steel. But it's not like this is some dinky, small, little pocket knife or folder with just a small amount of blade material. This thing is long. It's almost a foot long, and it is thick. So it's a huge chunk of metal. Very heavy duty. And D2 steel... Although it is nowadays considered more of a budget steel, it is a great outdoor tool steel when heat treated properly and cared for properly. They do also offer other knives in 1095 high carbon steel if you prefer that. Um, there's advantages and disadvantages to each. Now the other main thing I want to point out, and it's kind of obvious, right, is the competition. You've got Topps knives, and Essie knives, both making similar style survival fixed blades in the USA, uh, where this is made in China. Now, personally, I don't have a problem buying knives from China as long as they're quality knives. In other aspects of my life, I am kind of of that same mentality or morality of buy American, support American. As a knife enthusiast, that's kind of hard. There are so many great knives. So many of my favorite folders these days are made in China. But that's just something to consider that if you spend a little bit more money, you could probably get an Essie or a Tops. But I'm all for variety. I'm all for competition. I haven't seen anything that would say, don't buy a Holtzman's. Let me know what you guys think about Holtzman's Gorilla Survival in the comments. And let me know if you want to see more of their knives on the channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe. That's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching.